22 weeks. They won 16 games going through. This is about as bitter as it could possibly get for them right now. I think the doubt, you know, was there to a certain extent, um, you know, coming into the 2004 season. After a disappointing um, three seasons leading up to that, um, getting so close, uh, the pressure was starting to mount, there's no doubt about it. You have a quite a good year, you finish on top of the ladder and you lose a really important game not to get there. I could imagine the pressure that was, was on Choco. You know, we'd had that choker tag for a few years, even though we'd come up with some reasons why things might have gone perfect for us. One thing about the Port Adelaide Footy Club is it's perfectly clear that they exist to win premierships and um, you live that every day and the expectation was massive. You know, there's a huge amount of pressure on the club and, um, and, and the players. Port by a straight kick. Obviously very jubilant about it, as well they might be, but is it like a premiership for them? There were some external noises around how we, we played our grand final against the Saints. I thought the monkey was off the back um, you know, after that game. It was nearly like a, a breath of fresh air to, to know that we'd finally got into a grand final and, and had a ch chance to, to win one and um, you know, we're pretty confident playing Brisbane away from home. I think certainly um, early days that just the maybe the mental latitude to survive finals was not something that they were ready for. You know, I guess we were we were waiting like everyone else to see whether um, you know Port could string it all together and get themselves up for a grand final. Can we handle the moment uh, is probably the um, the thing that was still to be delivered on but we we'd achieved everything else. Reading the papers and, and seeing the the 50 experts tip for the day. and You know, they'd won three in a row um, leading into it. There wasn't one that had selected us or given us any chance, so there was a bit of silence around the table that morning and then all I remember is just breaking into belly laughs about you know, how wrong they were going to get it. Other clubs just could not play against Brisbane, but we could. All our games against Port Adelaide through that 2000 era were close. It was win one, lose one. A one point win or a two point loss or a draw, so we had some great history. We always knew going into that game that Port Adelaide were the best opposition you could have, we could have played. I had no doubt the club and, and the playing group had the ultimate belief. We think we deserve to, to win, or to play in a grand final and to win one. The two best teams of the past three years finally get to face off for football's biggest prize. And Brett Allen sets them in motion and just as desperate and determined. The Lions win the day though. Lambert left it behind. Carr for the first one of the afternoon. Just Carr. You know, I didn't show much excitement um, when I kicked it and it was probably because I just thought in my head that we, it's a big day, we, we've got plenty to, obviously it's still a lot to go, but I would like to have given a bit more than what I did. Um, but it was a good start, you know, the first quarter we gave ourselves a really good chance and I think that's what gave us confidence through the rest of the game that we knew that, okay, there's, there's no big deal, we're, we're, we're playing good football, we're playing the football that we should play and it's going to be a good game. It's pretty physical that first quarter. A little left on the on the cheek. We knew, and Wakes knew that Lynch had done a quad or something when he was running out. He pulled up pretty short when he was leading, so he knew he was in, in all sorts, and he, he came back on and 
What was Alistair thinking? <laughs> I have no idea. But I don't think he'd mind me saying that probably the bloke in the 10th row was more danger than what Wakelin was standing right in front of him. The haymakers were coming, but not much was hidden. But, but the funniest moment from that has got to be when um, Sean Burgoyne's in the pocket there. I think he might even been on Ackermanis, and they've seen the two fellas start swinging. They were trying to take the wrestle away from where the fight was. You just knew it wasn't the right thing to get in there. It was two men just slugging it out, and um, you know, I got wind burned from about 10 metres away. It was just crazy. I was really proud of Daryl, how he stood up to him and um, you know, he, he maintains he got a few in, but we all know <laughs> he was just built in the fresh air. Do you reckon the Wakeland family will be sharing Christmas with Alistair Lynch? No. And sitting in, in, the, in the rooms at half time and I think the acknowledgement, we, we couldn't play any better and we were still one point behind. Third quarters is what everyone talks about, that's the, the Premiership quarter and um, that's where we sort of found our, our niche a bit. The ball thrown into the pocket, lovely tap, Stuart Jew couldn't do it, oh, don't you love it when a player comes together? Marnie having a very good quarter, will it carry up the top for Wakeland to put the three goals in front? And that felt like that was going to be tough to draw back, uh, looking at their players' eyes, it was, you know, it was looking like that might be just a task too big for us. A lot of people ask, ask me, when did I think that we were going to win? When was the moment? And Adam Kingsley kicked, kicked a goal from, from the pocket. King has kicked a, a sealer at the end, that I, he, he tells me it was a sealer anyway. And so many great stories in this Port Adelaide team. Adam Kingsley suffered rejection early. He had Stuart with a goal. I think everyone that kicked goals in the last quarter said it was a sealer. Here he comes. <laughs> Small team in Adelaide uh, against uh, the odds of the AFL and, and, and coming out on top and, and being successful for all our supporters. Being the, the coach, you, you know, a great honour to be there and um, all those emotions kind of come, come flowing at that time. Look at that! Yeah, it gives me goosebumps every time I see it. When Choco pulled the tie up around his neck, everyone knew what that was about. Yeah, I thought that was just an extension of exactly how we felt. Um, there was so much pressure on our shoulders and um, when that final siren went, it was able to just pour out of us. He was himself, he was being himself and showed the emotion and I think we all, we all loved it. I think they sold the tie that night for forty or $50,000 for the club. People know me, they know that I'm very spontaneous and uh, <laughs> It seemed a good good idea at the time, and uh, basically telling you to you can shove your, your choking tag up your bum. There is a couple of mentions I'd like to make. Certainly as a major sponsor in Vodafone, and Alan Scott, you were wrong. Yeah, it was said clearly on the uh, on the TV with you know uh, Alan. Uh, front and centre that would never win with me as coach. It made it uh, even more pressure and uh, you know, I just acknowledged he was wrong at the time and facts will say he was. We can sit back now after the result of 2004 and know that we, we learnt from our mistakes. Um, we were a bloody good side. We got one and a lot of people strive to get one so we're lucky to have that. You know, your history will show teams that win all those games should should win premierships, and uh, you know, eventually we did. Mm -hmm.